Well, um, uh, where will I start then? For introduction, perhaps, um, it's been over 20 years ago, uh, back in my country. Uh, I will keep my country secret for a moment, and uh, later you will know why. Um, I try not to name any names or any uh, locations specifically, but in general, I will tell my story. Anyway, it was about 20, uh, more than 20 years ago when my friends uh, insist me, yeah, you have to now uh, start write, writing books uh, because of the stories that I told them what happened to my life and uh, where I've been traveling and how I've been traveling. So, um, I uh, back then I said, um, listen, I'm not... Uh, feeling myself like I'm uh, any special person because I met during my travels uh, I traveled in Russia that back then because I'm in, from a Soviet country so much I can tell ex-Soviet country and uh, I traveled across whole Russia and uh, I met the foreigner uh, travelers during my trips uh, and uh, who I helped a little bit and they told me their stories where they've been traveling and then how they ended up in Russia just crossing it and um, uh, I told my friends that listen uh, I uh, don't feel special because I met on my travels uh, other people who've been uh, in uh, way crazier ways of traveling crazy places uh, I mean places where I wouldn't go <laughs> probably but the difference was that uh, they traveled with money they had money for Asian travelers and I've been traveling traveling without money and surviving during my trips across whole Russia mm, that's uh, that's how uh, my friends uh, were thinking that I should uh, write books about that but yes uh, I wasn't ready back then and uh, life was very busy as well uh, and um, so that's the introduction uh, why I'm beginning with podcasts uh, still hiding my name a little bit because thinking back now maybe it was really crazy a little bit what I did and how I survived uh, without money in, in Russia so basically I traveled entire Russia several times uh, to Middle East, to Far East, uh, Siberia I was three times, I was in Tianshan Mountains uh, several times, four times I think I was there, and um, in uh, northern uh, Russia, but not north of Siberia, I was uh, more like European side uh, north to Kolan uh, Kolsky Paluostrov it's called in Russia, but it's uh, probably Kolan Half Island it's Murmansk is the uh, top there uh, closer to the north uh, quite a big city in Murmansk and um, yeah, Vladivostok is the farthest point uh, I've been uh, in the Far East in Russia, but the point is that I didn't travel with planes. I traveled hitchhiking most of the time. Sometimes I took trains, also on cargo trains uh, in some locations. I just uh, jumped on cargo trains and when I was young actually I trained hard. In I, I grew up in, the, in a very little town, like 20,000 people. And uh, the local train station, I was just training on cargo trains, jumping on and jumping off. And because I studied martial arts beginning from nine years old, uh, it was just part of my personal training, which uh, I think uh, only one friend of mine knew that I did that crazy th these crazy things. And uh, yeah, to tell <laughs> honestly, a couple of trains been uh, when I was young, I was maybe 14, 15 then. And I jumped the trains and practiced on them and a couple of trains have been stopped because of me I think one passenger train and one cargo train was stopped because somebody saw it somebody's hanging on the train in the back <laughs> they probably radioed uh, up that something is happening there and I, I, I got very quickly lost when train stopped <laughs> they couldn't catch me Anyway, that's just uh, have an idea that probably, yes, my training uh, and uh, my travels were a bit crazy. 
but I wanted to travel. I wanted really to travel. That was my hobby. I always wanted to go away from my Soviet, uh, like, uh, little country. And the uh, main reason, because I didn't like the climate. It, it wasn't politically aware or anything. It was anything bad because life was, uh, we all lived in happy, uh, happy, I don't know, Shisliva uh, Dietstva in English means happy youth. We were all in happy youth. So I didn't think about because of, uh, I was, um, living a bad life i didn't know any better life but uh, i just didn't like the um, uh, climate and uh, of course i knew that the uh, world is round and uh, there are better areas with better climate and palms etc so i always wanted to go away from my country but um, the traveling uh, was i i began traveling um, probably when i was seven years eight years nine years i don't remember i was very young and that was one friend of mine we were crazy and um, there was one um, foreigner cargo truck uh, which was just next to our house parked and we asked the guy uh, can he take us just to show the car just a little bit just a few miles out of town and he took us it was like uh, back in Soviet times we trusted each other it wasn't like paranoid like uh, feeling about each other about what can happen you know he took us and took like out of town it was little town but he took us out of town and I remember it was funny to come back to home because uh, we knew there were local buses coming uh, till that point but they were very rare like once in an hour or something like that so he took us as far as the city buses went out of town and um, we get, I got off and okay thanks and we're going back home that was my biggest uh, trip on that time <laughs> just get out of town because uh, i was a just child and uh, we started to walk back home and uh, waited in bus station but we waited 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 bus didn't come okay we we take a walk we walked a little bit again uh, we didn't know maybe there, there are some issues uh, with buses uh, they never come so we decided to walk a little bit it uh, i think it wasn't very far maybe 10 kilometers out of town but still we are very young and uh, when we saw one uh, castle ruins of one castle and we went to um, uh, climb on, on the, the castle so we spent there an hour probably and we came down and um, uh, again to bus station waited again maybe half an hour or an hour I don't remember but the bus didn't ever came so we started to walk again and, and, and so it happened just uh, by bad luck we walked quite a long time until we finally catched the bus which brought us um, home but by that time it was very dark and uh, when I got home, my parents were worried, of course. Uh, and uh, in the end, we, we got punished severely, Russia style. So uh, my back was hurting after that for a day, I, I think. But uh, that was a regular punishment because I wasn't uh, the best boy. Uh, and um, it was tradition in Russia. We just. Uh, uh, punished you physically or put you st stand in the corner and uh, you know so I didn't like that of course get, to get punished but it didn't prevent me from doing crazy things even when I was young and uh, that's it uh, that's probably my beginning of my uh, traveling uh, when I got the virus uh, of, of, of wish to go and, and see the world and um, the next bigger travel uh, when I escaped my home, I had some little uh, issues with uh, like um, every teenager had many teenagers. Actually, later I met many many people who also escaped um, when we were young. So now I don't feel anything. It was special that I escaped home, but I did. I did a couple of times. Once I escaped. Um, I was hiding in the forest for a couple of weeks, living in uh, some, found some camping uh, hut, I don't know how it's called, it's like uh, hunters probably built something, so I went there and uh, I stayed there and um, 
and came back home but uh, my parents also probably uh, not so stupid than you a teenager you know he escapes i think i was like let me think like 14 15 16 something like that i escaped for a couple of weeks and uh, came back but um, i think even before that already i started to hitchhike uh, little distances or after i don't remember during that time anyway I, I i traveled across all my country my country small ex-soviet country not like entire russia it's periphery of uh, uh, the russia but uh, i traveled hitchhiking uh, many many times across all the country summer times of course and um, during winters i hitchhiked only when i needed to go to another town <clears throat> not to pay for a bus ticket but uh, I was so used to travel and hitchhike, it was just part of my nature. And uh, I remember as soon as I got 18, uh, I got my passport when I uh, told my mom that, uh, listen, I'm going now to travel to Russia. I don't know how far I go, but the idea is to go to, to see the big Russia. And... Um, uh, yeah, one more thing I would say that I've seen Russia before already because um, my mother is Russia and uh, her parents, her mother actually, uh, lived far away uh, in uh, ex-Soviet country. So we traveled every second year, we traveled with family uh, there uh, by train. And I knew it's beautiful. I knew it's beautiful country. And uh, But I wanted to travel not just by train, but to see everywhere I could go on my own. Because when I traveled with my mom, I was uh, still a teenager, you know. And um, as soon as I got my passport, I told my mom, now I'm going. I prepared my tent. I didn't have any money. But I was so uh, decisive, decisive that I have to go. I have to go because as well, I regret that I didn't go later. And um, it was still Soviet time. I didn't need any uh, extra visa or passport. I was part of Soviet um, country, Soviet um, like uh, community. And uh, that's it. I was went till the border just before the first night. I, I slept in a tent before crossing the Russian border. And uh, I remember it was cold because I went very early in the spring. It was close to zero I think it was cold and I didn't have any good clothes I was just very lightly um, uh, like shoes very simple shoes very very simple uh, Soviet time clothes and a simple uh, like military style tent but very low and very uh, you know very basic nothing like uh, now we have tents and um, I built myself a frame uh, because it, this tent was meant uh, actually to be built the frame uh, during the camping from wood but I built the uh, aluminium frame myself for it which was collapsible I mean I could take it apart I mean and uh, that was it that was my tent and uh, when I slept on that tent first uh, night uh, I was still thinking should I go back because it was very inconvenient it was cold <laughs> and uh, and then I decided, no, I have to <laughs> go still on. And I don't remember. Perhaps I didn't even sleep because it was cold. And um, I tried to sleep. I couldn't. So I packed my uh, tent and I walked all night till the morning. And uh, when a hitchhike, uh, hitchhiking car started to pick me up with the first uh, daylight. And that's it. Uh, when I went, I had so many travels since that I can't remember anymore exactly where my first uh, trip uh, was but um, I think the first trip I went up to Siberia anyway uh, details are not so important they important how how did I travel how I managed in Soviet times people didn't um, ask money I mean I was very young I was 18 years old and uh, every time uh, uh, like car stops uh, they expected usually that um, people sometimes they give some money but they didn't demand it it wasn't never required like uh, that you pay for a hitchhiker didn't pay so if a big truck stopped and even even smaller cars I always first think and said that I'm just a traveler 
I don't have any uh, money to pay that, w uh, would you take me? Few times I've been uh, refused, like you know, we, we wanted to pick up uh, somebody who could pay because we were in uh, financial difficulty themselves. But um, that's understandable. So uh, normally they always took uh, truck drivers. Usually uh, they took me because. And uh, like uh, Soviet times, there were, weren't any limitation for truck drivers uh, how long they could drive. Like there weren't any meters or whatever. Police didn't ask how did you sleep or or did you have enough rest. And um, so uh, they pick up uh, just to talk to somebody uh, to keep them awake because we're getting tired. Uh, like sometimes uh, more than twenty four hours, like uh, driving straight. <laughs> so. Um, uh, when I uh, like in Soviet times, we had a lot of uh, anecdotes going around, like uh, funny stories, uh, like jokes going around. I have had thousands of them probably in my memory. And when I told them the funny stories and the anecdotes, and they told them back, and we had uh, like time went fast then. And some truck. Uh, truck drivers they uh, kept me for a couple of days because Russia is big you know and uh, we uh, like uh, longest uh, trips that I had two or three days with one same truck because I didn't mind where which direction uh, exactly the truck was going anywhere in Russia where I could see something new so important not back uh, direction to home but important uh, further away uh, farther to uh, Urals to Siberia to Far East and the um, longest trip I did was about um, uh, three weeks. Uh, uh, yes, I have to still say uh, that my uh, country is um, uh, now is part of Europe. So that's all I can tell. So from European part country, I hitchhiked three weeks till um, uh, Far East. I arrived in three weeks to Far East, to uh, Vl uh, Vladivostok. But I uh, did uh, several stops in uh, between, not in one truck, of course. Uh, like I uh, even had some long trips with um, one uh, group of cars who brought from Europe uh, cars back to Mongolia from Europe. So uh, with one uh, team, I traveled probably three days as well. It was in one of my trips. So we brought, uh, they took me, and uh, sometimes we stopped, they cooked outside, and we ate together, and they put me to drive as well. Back then it was very simple. Uh, you know how to drive? Yeah, okay. Uh, I didn't, yeah, I did have a driving license. Yeah, I was 18 already, I had driving license. And uh, do you have driving license? Yes, I do. Uh, okay, good try, I'm tired, you know. So um, I tried uh, the car, even trucks sometimes. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, Russia times, nobody really cared. Important is the mission to, g to get accomplished. And they looked at, uh, I was very tall, actually. I looked probably older than I was. And I looked serious. I talked serious. Uh, they put me to drive just to have some rest themselves. And, uh, you know, it was fun time. But back then, there were no uh, problems of um, if somebody was just driving uh, the car and and uh, we just trusted people by the look how we were from soviet times and um, uh, with mongols uh, who took cars uh, from europe uh, it was i think three or four uh, or maybe more cars yeah we have a group of three and they were more cars but uh, that was funny actually they looked on the map uh, there should be a road, but we talked to local peoples uh, somewhere in the middle uh, of Russia, somewhere after Urals, uh, probably close to uh, Russian Asia already. And uh, they looked the map, uh, there should be a road, but uh, the road was almost inexistent or so bad quality that it was just breaking their car, cars apart. And as they were like six uh, people in the group, uh, they started to argue between each other that should they go, uh, go ahead on this bad road which was written on the map but uh, it doesn't really exist you know and they talked to locals and the locals advised to go to other way uh, which is uh, huge um, uh, like make um, a bigger bigger way should be to get to some point maybe 100 kilometers more but uh, on the better road 
and uh, the group split apart. So I went with the um, uh, team who went uh, the same road, uh, which was uh, written on the map, but uh, <laughs> the road just ended after a few hundred kilometers. So we, we had to come back a lot and uh, find another way. So that's a Russia, uh, you know, Soviet Russia. It was like road was on the map, but it didn't really exist. So you, we were driving like basically um, having a rally on the side of uh, the road. The road was in the middle, but we had on the both sides where already were tracks um, uh, made by other cars who couldn't drive on this uh, official uh, road. Just f like 10, 20 meters, uh, 30 meters uh, aside on the field. Or the track where people uh, were driving, but it was only possible during the uh, dry season, not when it was raining. And yeah, we had like um, on parallel several tracks. We had like speed tests and all kind of fun. And um, finally, the car uh, when we were already out of this um, bad situation, we went found finally. A good road uh, close to what was the city? I think it was uh, Krasnoyarsk or something like that. Krasnoyarsk uh, uh, Rayon. Uh, and uh, there was where one of the cars broke down. So they found a bottle of vodka to some local uh, master who, who uh, made a frame metal frame to attach the car engine broke down so they uh, attached the car to um, another one and they went like uh, on did like that and uh, the mongols were actually very um, friendly and um, uh, how to say uh, they wanted to say me uh, ask me where i want to go i said i want to go to china i want to go to shaolin and um, they said, oh, come with us, we are going to Mon Mongolia, so you cross the border, and after Mongolia, it's easy uh, to get to uh, China there. Uh, my idea was to get to uh, Shaolin Temple to practi continue practice martial, martial arts there. <coughs> but then uh, the, um, on the border, we get into trouble, uh, because... I had like a Soviet uh, country passport and locals uh, were allowed, locals who lived in, uh, close to the border, we were allowed to travel to China actually without any visa. It was, But I wasn't like local uh, there. I had passport of another uh, Soviet country. So uh, they started to uh, they let me go because I was very young. They just on the border control. They said, "What the fuck is going on there?" That uh, they shouted on the Mongols that you are bringing spies uh, into uh, Mongolia, and uh, they. I think they started even uh, beating like I uh, in front of everybody, just uh, not hardly, but just pushing and shouting at, uh, that that we put you in prison, etc., etc. Et but I don't know what happened to them later, because I was uh, pushed out of there, back to Russia, and it was already border control zone there. You wouldn't be allowed to be there without permission, that zone anyway. Uh, but they let me go, even without, uh, I think they didn't even put me police or anything, because, uh, you know, it's it's clearly was visible that I, I, I'm a very naive boy there, I just want to travel. And I wasn't any spy, but for them was trouble for border control. So we shouted on these Mongols that, uh, fuck, you are bringing spies over here. And uh, anyway, they let me go. I don't know. I really don't know what happened to the Mongols later. Uh, did they have to pay? Probably had to pay some bribes and to get <laughs> a bit of troubles in. That's, that's how it worked in Russia. I saw it many times. And um, uh, back, uh, I was sitting then in a train station, it was in Manjuria. Manjuria, it's uh, uh, after Baikal already. So I was sitting there to get back to the uh, main magistral uh, of Siberian magistral to get to Far East. But um, the, uh, the Manjuria side was several hundred kilometers away from Mag magistral. It was in the direction to China. To the south, so I had to get back to the north, close to Baikal, and uh, then continue my trip to Far East. So I was sitting in um, a very uh, quiet zone there, uh, because there is no movement practically on this zone. 
and um, no cars I mean and locals uh, we were all going by trains only few with cars and uh, the train arrived actually uh, from China uh, and uh, China, they actually the train was their border stop uh, they pulled this train or entire train up with cranes and they changed the wheels because the tracks the Chinese tracks and um, uh, Russia uh, track standards are different and they changed the wheels and uh, the same train basically continued uh, on the Russia side so I wanted to get on this train but um, I, I didn't get it I, I think I didn't get it. yeah I helped uh, the Chinese uh, to get the uh, huge bags like bags like I think some bags were like two meters or one half meters uh, wide and uh, uh, like square full of uh, shoes and all kinds of so they were so large that uh, in the passenger train they couldn't get on the train uh, and um, I don't remember why did they, why were they off the train at all but anyway we were in the train station where I was and um, they were trying to get with all the big bags and like family entire family like several people uh, on, onto the train and uh, the train uh, control uh, were throwing out the bag because they were so big that they blocked the entire uh, tiny uh, passageway of a Russia uh, coupe train and um, coupe, coupe wagons and uh, I helped them the bags to uh, to give them back through a window so we squeezed the bags through a window in into the train again and uh, they gave me uh, quite a pack of money for that and uh, for me it was a good good uh, like uh, for food for a while and uh, that's a funny story like just uh, people helping each other just to get along with life uh, they tried to give money also to the wagon keeper but, but she couldn't uh, or he I don't remember who it was but uh, they, they didn't take it because uh, it was too big the bag the Chinese bags were too big even the money wouldn't help them <laughs> to solve the issues of walking around there anyway so I got uh, hitchhiked uh, uh, hitchhiking back to the uh, rail uh, to the Amur uh, Magistral close to Baikal to continue my trip but I don't remember which one was first uh, try and which was was second I think I tried this Manjurian border twice yes I tried it twice because it was so um, it was beautiful that area that was uh, like Manjuri area uh, close to the Chinese border there were no forests nothing it was like um, steppe and uh, sopkas it means like uh, hills but it was all dry but it was kind of um, special beauty I don't know like antique uh, revolution time breaches iron metal breaches you know over the uh, dried uh, riverbeds and um, there, uh, they said that even rivers were flow once uh, once a year probably after huge rains but uh, most of the time they are uh, empty so it's called the wadis wadis uh, empty uh, riverbeds and um, some uh, I think it was a second trip when I traveled to the same same area I think I did it because I already had a different passport I don't remember the reason but uh, I tried twice the same border actually and I visited it uh, you know just beautiful so I hitchhiked and one funny guy was um, uh, traveling on uh, on the bus with whole entire family he had a like big bus but private one <laughs> so uh, old bus I mean not uh, not the modern one but the old old bus uh, he uh, did it for he kept it for his family trips and um, he had a couple family members on this bus and he took me as a hitchhiker and it was funny to hitchhike actually there too I have to tell that that um, as a that is dry like step or or like dry zone uh, the cars they don't drive on the same exact truck every uh, track everyone I was like um, uh, one track 
uh, where car would go and when I looked from far away like a few miles away a few kilometers many kilometers away I see that dust cloud is coming to my direction so I tried to pick up on which truck track uh, uh, this um, vehicle is coming to so I could hitchhike you know so I remember that I said oh, no it wasn't uh, coming to, uh, through my track another track was a few hundred meters uh, uh, further away so I was running to another track uh, like uh, waving hand like I want to get onto a truck and I was worried that maybe they think it's some uh, criminal running there but anyway he stopped the bus and um, uh, the uh, I got on the bus but uh, why I ended up there at all is because these are so huge areas uh, that the villages are like tens and um, tens and tens of kilometers away from central uh, like uh, driving uh, way so if somebody wants to go uh, to his village uh, he just lets me uh, on the middle of nowhere <laughs> in a step you know and uh, there's nobody i was uh, i'm alone so basically uh, i took a huge risk and uh, there were very few cars <laughs> going through his zone and uh, i came off at car okay he goes to his village i want to go on uh, to a chinese border you know so uh, and uh, yeah i hitchhiked around to the other tra track and um, uh, he took me the bus and when it was uh, the Wadi came, Wadi is the um, empty uh, riverbed and he drove the zone there were no bridges and uh, it was just uh, getting closer to a border. Bridges were probably in other, other location but he uh, from his village probably he took the shortest way and he <laughs> shouted everyone who the bus was very loud actually because uh, all the Russian buses you know they make a lot of noise and he shouted everybody everybody hold on now we're going through a um, riverbed and uh, like from a movie you know it was he jumped into with high speed he jumped into uh, the um, uh, downhill to the riverbed it was like maybe 20 30 meters deep but it's wide it was like uh, 50 or 100 meters wide i remember but he had to keep a high speed because he said that after he said like that if he wouldn't keep up the speed uh, he wouldn't get uh, be able with the <laughs> crappy bus he wouldn't be able to get up the hill on the other side of the riverbed you know to continue road so we had two very uh, uh, high jumps first into the uh, riverbed downhill and he sped up i don't know maybe 100 kilometers an hour or maybe less but a very high speed for that bus old crappy bus and when uh, the drawing engine he he uh, went up the hill and we jumped uh, back to a uh, field you know it was a, like funny memory as well and uh, yeah but i don't remember he probably didn't uh, drive me into the border yes he he dropped me off uh, somewhere else again because it was a long trip of hundreds of kilometers to get to a border from uh, Baikal, uh, Lake of Baikal. Uh, and uh, one uh, local, no, it, it was some um, jeep, some old Russian jeep. Uh, they put, pit, uh, picked me up and on the second trip, um, uh, they were very careful. I told them that, listen, uh, last time I wasn't left in, I want to go now again with a different passport, maybe they let me go. Uh, to China now and so we didn't take the risk to uh, bring me up to a cordon there to border cordon they let me off uh, and we went continued to to Mongolia to Mongolia to China and I went um, to the uh, cordon myself and asked them officials there can I go and I couldn't get in again so basically uh, I got back to um, Baikal and um, uh, as uh, in Baikal, there uh, through uh, there is a Baikalo uh, Baikalo Murski Magistral. It's a railway from Baikal to uh, um, uh, to Far East, and um, I was thinking to uh, hitchhike on the roads because there were also like um, roads on the map written. <laughs> I didn't have an internet or satellite, nothing, uh, even the cell phones didn't exist that time yet. It was thirty years ago or something. 
and um, then I um, uh, couldn't get any big roads anymore. There weren't any big roads. We were only on the map, so very dirty and muddy roads were there, local roads, and big trucks weren't going these roads anymore. Uh, all the cargo was uh, shipped by the trains. So uh, I uh, tried a little bit by local cars, and uh, there were some cars burnt. I remember on the uh, on the roads, and military were seeking some escaped criminals and that kind of things. I saw there, but it was very beautiful. Actually, nature was very beautiful there, and um, uh, it was already criminal area, a uh, criminal uh, time. I mean. Let me think, uh, first trip I made 93, uh, something like that. Mm, it was maybe later trip I saw the criminal uh, yeah, activity there. But um, anyway, uh, the, the, uh, I couldn't get on on the cars anymore, and there were local mot motorcycles uh, now. Uh, I think it's how we call it, um, M. I think it's M, just let M was uh, this uh, motorcycle. Uh, very, very uh, heavy and uh, powerful, like a tank, you know, a little motorcycle. Like it was copied, I mean, model from uh, German military motorcycles from Second World War. So this was very uh, powerful motorcycles. We were able to move on these roads. So uh, I was uh, taken on these uh, motorcycles sometimes, and then I saw that no, it it takes like uh, too long time to get to Far East, and um, the uh, local uh, little village there were cargo trains were moving slowly, so I jumped on the cargo train, on the platform, and I traveled till um, Blagoveshensk, Blagoveshensk, till Blagoveshensk I traveled on cargo trains, and um, very extremely beautiful and just can't uh, it's picturesque just if you travel on top of uh, the cargo train on the platform uh, between the things or whatever there were sometimes even empty platforms if you travel on them and see entire nature not like from window but you see all around you a beautiful siberian far east it was extremely beautiful so anyway, I got off in Blagoveshensk, and um, I remembered that Blagoveshensk was actually the city where my mother was born, and I wanted to see a city around, a beautiful city there. But uh, I had some. I tried to get from there to China as well. In Blagoveshensk, uh, it's a border town with China. Uh, at, uh, across the river is a Heihe. Heihe is the Chinese town. Uh, recently, I heard they have built the bridge. If I remember right, they built just a few years ago a bridge there. Now it's bridge there. Back then it wasn't. It was just uh, local uh, ships were going there to China, and uh, local people were again uh, visa free uh, going to China and Chinese visa free going to the local Russia town. Only locals, not uh, not foreigners. Uh, I mean, not other Soviet uh, areas. And um, I wanted to get there anyway. I couldn't get there legally, so what I did, I found a ship which was obviously for me, uh, it was, uh, cargo was meant for China, it was like combines, combines like a big tractor for field for collecting the crop, you know, so uh, it was loaded all on the ship, on the, it's not even ship, it's like uh, attached to ship, ship kind of, um, uh, I don't know how we call it, and um, it was loaded all with uh, with the combine combines with the tractors, and uh, I hid my uh, I, w I went into a um, uh, how we call it um, shipyard the shipyard and uh, of course secretly uh, during the night cover and looked that nobody's around nobody sees you and uh, like a spy <laughs> and um, I hid myself between the uh, combines. I actually uh, went into uh, one of the uh, uh, big uh, crop collecting combines and uh, hid them on the sharp uh, some conveyor on, on, onto that. So I put some clothes under me that the pigs wouldn't, wouldn't scratch me too much and uh, I lied down there. I hope, okay, in the morning the ship goes 
and I'll be on China, and in China I'll come off, but that didn't happen, so I, I waited there till another night, I think, and uh, it was uh, it was burning, it was, uh, the shop started to, uh, because they still move a little bit, and they start to go through the clothes, <laughs> sharp peaks, and um, on the conveyor, and uh, started to go into my body and hurt me, so I decided no, uh, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to stand another night there, another day, and uh, you have to take of course pee as well, so I <laughs> did the same thing uh, right there, and um, I came off a combine uh, very quietly, like a, you know, uh, like a spy, like a centimeter by centimeter, not to make any noises, to see around that didn't bring attention because uh, the port was, uh, the shipyard was still, uh, the lights were on, projectors were on, uh, I, I couldn't uh, very freely move there, it wasn't completely dark. So I came off and um, the thinking, should I go away or uh, go, go back uh, traveling on or still try to go to China? So I uh, f looked around what my options are and I found on the same, um, uh, like, uh, uh, platform, uh, uh, hole, metal hole, and I quietly opened it and went in and put the uh, hole in, I uh, put the cover back in carefully and uh, went inside there, and it's completely dark, but I had lamp, uh, pocket lamp, so I hid me inside and decided, okay, I'll stay for another day there, and maybe I'll get to China then, and um, Basically, I heard during the day on all kind of noises, and I was thinking already, okay, the ship is now uh, arrived to China. Till, till next night, I I decided that uh, okay, now I'm gonna look uh, where am I? <laughs> and uh, it was a lot of noises. I mean, the entire day it was some movement going on, and uh, I heard dogs walking on top because it's very loud. Everything you hear, every movement you hear on the ship, and uh, on the empty. Um, Trum, Trum, it's in Russia. Uh, anyway, you hear inside all the noises, and uh, I was worrying that maybe dogs are like smelling something and coming after me, but they didn't. So, uh, after the noises all the, went quiet, I went for many hours. I watched the clock, I had hand watch, and watched what time is it. It's like maybe two or three o'clock at night. I, uh, I started to make move, but I didn't come out from the same uh, hall where I went in. Uh, I, I was in another area of a uh, of, uh, ship already, and um, I started just carefully. I, I put uh, my legs, uh, I found a place for, to uh, push with my head the, the, the cover. It was like uh, one meter wide or, yeah, about one meter wide, I think, was the cover. But it was heavy, it was metal cover, it, there were, weren't any handles, uh, it was just uh, put uh, lightly on top uh, of a hole. And I, the heavy cover I started to push with my head, to just to look what's going on there. And uh, I remember I had a little uh, hole pushed out like two centimeters, maybe three centimeters, <laughs> to see what's um, going uh, on there. And I didn't see any combines anymore, like all were gone. I said, oh, now I arrived in China, you know, they already emptied the, the cargo arrived. But um, that was my first thought. When I little bit moved uh, more the, um, the, uh, the cover, a little bit more wider, and uh, it made some creaking sound. And I stopped, just in case, maybe somebody hears around. And I looked around with eyes, only with eyes. I looked left, right, and I saw feet, boots, standing right in front of a hole. Like in a movie, absolutely, you know, it was crazy. And I couldn't uh, put, put back the cover neither, because I knew that if a metal touches the, the ship, it makes a bang, you know. But the, the screeching sound, of course, it, it, it's uh, with, uh, with empty ship, it, it's, uh, you don't clearly know where it comes from. Actually, the guy didn't <laughs> realize that it was just right behind him, behind his feet. And I looked at the boots and I decided, no, I'm gonna like millimeter by millimeter lower, lower down the, the, 
the cover <laughs> and I did it it's very very long like maybe five or ten minutes like very slowly slowly I was all sweating and uh, you know I didn't want to make any noise and I put my fingers uh, in the last millimeter uh, to make it uh, very very quiet uh, to put the um, uh, metal heavy heavy metal cover to put it back and I succeeded without uh, loud noises and um, when I sat there, I couldn't move. I didn't want to uh, make any steps, any movement that would any sound would uh, would come accidentally or drop anything or light or whatever. So I was just standing with my head touching the cover still, <laughs> and I waited very long time. It felt very long, maybe uh, like fifteen minutes, maybe half an hour, until the, I heard that the steps were going away. There, <laughs> the guy who was standing there watching, probably he was uh, facing the hole where I went in. Mm, I suspect uh, that's was just that's just in my head. I don't know. Maybe the the dog smelled because I heard during the day that there was dog going there around. Maybe the dog heard the uh, or smelled the somebody where it went in, uh, gave them sign, and and uh, maybe they didn't want to risk to get attacked to get into there. But uh, I suspect the guy was just waiting me, facing the other hole that I come back from there. He was standing there almost whole night. Anyway, he went away at three or four o'clock at night. I think he went away. Either I don't know what to do, but uh, I didn't take any chances. As soon as I uh, heard he went away I waited another like 15 minutes I didn't want anyone to come back <laughs> it would, would be over so I just pushed away uh, carefully the cover and I left the port uh, as, as uh, invisibly as possible I could but I was actually in a plane uh, projector light all the time when I was walking away because the port was all uh, illuminated uh, and um, I just made a face that I'm just a worker. <laughs> I don't care. Night shift doesn't matter. I was just walking uh, with a straight face and a calm walk. And uh, when I got out of the port, uh, then uh, uh, through the, over the fences, of course, I wouldn't go to uh, gates, you know. But um, <laughs> I wasn't still sure. It was night time. I wasn't still sure that if I'm in Russia or in my, I'm in China already, I didn't see any shops or any signs, anything. So it was just a port area. And uh, I saw a couple of guys walking by. I also heard them speaking Russian. But uh, you never know. Maybe they are just visiting China. So I asked them that, uh, excuse me, am I in uh, where I am? Uh, I remember if I asked if I'm in China, uh, probably not. Uh, what city I am? I asked them, and they said it's it's uh, the surprise faces, but said it's Plakovetsk, you know. And uh, they said okay, thank you. Oh, no, I I'm just lost, you know. And then I was a bit disappointed that I wasn't in China, but uh, later on I decided that that was probably good luck that I didn't get to China. I would have been. In trouble there probably uh, I could get into prison for <laughs> crossing the bridge illegally uh, crossing the border illegally but anyway so when I continued to um, hitchhike uh, on uh, no I took a train I took a train uh, continued to direction to uh, far east to uh, to um, uh, Vladivostok so uh, I couldn't find any platforms on local trains, the cargo trains there, uh, and uh, I think by schedule I could didn't want to wait uh, the passenger train to try to get without tickets there. That was another way I used uh, this uh, traveling way, but um, I got uh, I jumped onto one um, uh, letter. Uh, ladder on uh, on the behind of one of the um, uh, high uh, wagons and there were many high wagons all the train was high wagons i think i couldn't find any platform he was it was moving in direction to um, uh, where i wanted to go to uh, vladivostok from blagoveshensk and um, then i grabbed myself and said okay next stop i come down but then that just uh, happened that big storm came and started to pour rain and uh, every uh, village or every city it passed it moved very slowly but i couldn't see anything it was so dark 
like so heavy rain was coming so I was uh, uh, hanging on the ladder there back for many many hours I mean it was uh, I, I didn't get really uh, actually tired and I remember it was tired it was just very cold because I was hanging conveniently I put my hands over across my hands and legs uh, con uh, comfortably on the ladder but um, uh, I still had to hold on I couldn't sleep or anything and it completely cold I was shivering there uh, because from the top of the train when the train moved slowly all the uh, rain was coming uh, <laughs> on my back you know on my head and um, then after many many hours uh, the daylight started to come up already uh, on some small uh, village train station I could finally uh, jump off a train because in dark I didn't take the risk and um, then uh, when I came off and I went to a train station and I fell asleep I was just um, I don't know which word I was shivering I was uh, having nightmares really I uh, clamped uh, I, I was sitting in waiting room like in a, uh, in a uh, chair but clamped my back that nobody could steal it and I slept uh, head on my back and uh, I remember it was very very uh, like like illness like really a shivering and uh, fever and uh, maybe it was because of stress subconsciously but maybe because of cold everything together anyway and uh, I wasn't scared I, I did crazy stuff before so it was just uh, physical uh, uh, stretching was a little bit too much for me from cold and everything so anyway I had nightmares and shivering but uh, after that it was gone I uh, whole night whole uh, whole day or I don't remember it was day or night but anyway for many hours I was just having waking up and going to sleep waking up going to sleep and it was nightmare seeing nightmares uh, of everything I don't remember what but it was terrifying sleep and but I uh, next day I was all right so I continued my trip and during and there was one interesting story more I found another platform uh, cargo train I went to platform and I fell asleep I was still tired I fell asleep on the cargo train and uh, the uh, the platform was almost empty but it was very convenient a nice place to to lie down and sleep and Sun came out after the rain so I dried a little bit and uh, anyway one moment somebody is pushing me on my legs and I opened my eyes and that was gun on my head and guy was hand, uh, having two hands uh, on his uh, gun and uh, all I remember it was it wasn't regular like uh, Russian Makarov uh, like with dark black it was shiny very shiny and maybe better gun I don't know which model it was but it was a big gun anyway the big a big handgun and he held it uh, in direction to my head and said uh, stand up come with me he was in plain form but I understood by his uh, actions but he's a policeman you know so militia uh, was back then he was militia man and um, he took me to a local uh, militia station and uh, he they checked my uh, bags and I explained them I'm traveling I'm hitchhiking etc etc you know Russia very, very simple people but right at this moment somebody called on the phone and the other guy picked the phone and uh, how, how I found actually uh, was that uh, there are the control stations like platforms uh, when cars are passing uh, trains are passing though so they can can see from a top some uh, like military zones where passing there are military um, controls from high above they see all the trains who are passing that nobody's hiding there on trains and they check also from below on some train station but anyway they saw me from the top but I was sleeping there so that's how we that's why he approached me and um, anyway somebody was calling to a police station and um, uh, the guy told uh, who pick up the phone he told to the guy who was talking to me right now that one of his guy was, uh, guys was uh, killed uh, uh, that night and uh, he was just very short he asked uh, which direction uh, they ca uh, I came from uh, with my train 
and uh, I came from another direction luckily I wasn't coming from uh, where the other pasta boy I think was killed or somebody that was killed anyway and um, uh, so he uh, the guy was so nice he actually the policeman he took me back to the same train he put me back exactly how I was he told me you haven't seen anything nothing has happened to you you sleep here you close your eyes for several hours the, until you are out of here and uh, we haven't seen you that's it and he didn't fill any forms or anything in police station he just brought me back to the same train and they let me go so that was a nice experience uh, it could have ended very bad if i was by unlucky coincidence coming from another direction with that train i could have been under investigation for a long time there Anyway, I got uh, to Vladivostok finally with many uh, stories to tell and I will tell, uh, continue from um, how I, what I did in Vladivostok. I, I tried also crazy things. I tried to get to Japan on, on a cargo ship, but not legally, of course. I tried to uh, jump it uh, again on a cargo port. But uh, how I didn't succeed and how I came back uh, to my country, and uh, I will continue on the next uh, uh, next uh, part. So that's it. That's the introduction. That how uh, my crazy life and what my friends were telling that you should write a book, but haven't written a book about it. I've written actually several books on different topics, mostly scientifically uh, more related. So I don't have more. Uh, much time to write just the stories i just take the time to tell it right now in podcast maybe one day i'll write a book as well with more details so that's it um, enough for this uh, introduction and i uh, hope it was interesting and i hope it it will be even more interesting to hear what happened uh, in vladivostok back there uh, over 30 years ago and uh, over 20 25 years ago and uh, how I came uh, back and what happened on my way back uh, through all the Russia. I didn't come uh, back straight line. I made a uh, little uh, uh, call curves across Russia in different areas to have it uh, more interesting to see more of the Russia. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening and uh, I will continue later on.